Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews and to another reading vlog. Uh, my most recent reading vlog has just finished. It was my Halloween reading vlog, just to give you a sense of where we are in time. It's the 29th of October today. I really enjoyed doing a themed TBR, but I thought I would go back to uh, doing a reading a series reading vlog, read along sort of thing, um, because the third book in the Girls of Paper and Fire series comes out at uh, some point in November, when you're watching this probably. I'm deciding whether or not I want to buy it. So I own uh, the Fairy Loot edition of Girls of Paper and Fire, which is very nice, shiny. It's normal hardback of Girls of Storm and Shadow. And recently the very kind people over at Hodder accepted my request for a digital review copy on NetGalley, which is like a site where reviewers can get free copies of books to review them ahead of pub date. Um, and so I got approved for Girls of Fate and Fury, which is the third book. And I'm trying to decide if I want to, in addition to that, buy a hardback copy. So we're kind of doing an is it worth it vlog, I guess. And at the end, I will decide if I want to order a hardback copy. I thought this would be a nice way of kind of a good excuse to reread the series from the start, which I don't think I've done because I'm pretty sure I read Girls of Storm and Shadow Cold. I can't honestly remember, but I'm pretty sure I did. And yeah, I've moved on a lot in my YA reading in the last... When was this published? This must have been like 2017? Oh, 2018. Okay. So with that in mind, we're reading this not in a sense of, um, is this book... <sighs> I'm trying to work out the right way of wording it. Like, I think it is a really good thing that these books exist because they are written by a woman of colour, featuring a woman of colour, dealing with very difficult topics that I think are important to be addressed in an, in this fantasy context, but in the real world as well, and uh, featuring sapphic representation. I think the fact that these books exist is fabulous. What I want to know, is it worth it? Is it worth it for me personally, with where I am in my reading at the moment? Is this still a series that I am 100% on board with, do I want to own them still? Because actually if I don't, then I would like to pass on these copies to somebody who would enjoy them a lot more. And I think this is a series where somebody could really enjoy a couple of nice hardbacks. Maybe I am that person. Maybe I'm that person who will want to reread the series a lot. So I thought I would reread them. I have already made a start. I've been a little bit ill over the last few days, which you'll know if you watched that Halloween vlog, however many weeks ago it was. Just a warning, if you are planning on picking these books up or watching this video, these books do contain themes of violence and sexual assault. If that's something that you particularly need to be sensitive towards in reading, feel free to give this video a skip. I'm not going to get into it in graphic detail, but we will probably touch on it because I think it's an important part of why these books work and why I think that they are good and why, why why in this context in a fantasy book I think it's important to include that. I've not been particularly well, but I have managed to do some reading. I am 213 pages through Girls of Paper and Fire and I'm really enjoying it. This is a nice thing to say. Um, I think this book is a really solid YA what is making noises? Who is mowing the lawn at this hour? So we have our main character, Lei, who is chosen to go and be one of the concubines of the Emperor of the Paper Girls, because we have a cast system of three casts. Let me find the description of them. The Paper Cast, fully human, unadorned with any animal demon features and incapable of demon abilities such as flight. Steel Cast, humans endowed with partial animal demon qualities, both in physicality and abilities. And Moon Cast, fully demon with whole animal demon features such as horns, wings, or fur on a humanoid form and complete demon abilities. Oh, it's a tight spine. Lay, Paper Cast, sent to become concubine of the king, who is a demon. Uh, and, or Moon Cast, I should probably say. So, so far she has got there. She is going through a lot of lessons to learn how to be caught. She's not happy about being there, I should probably express. She's not not keen to go, has been taken from her family by force. We're sort of in the starting to get to defiant stage of the book, I would I would describe it as. And obviously there is somebody she has seen who is called Ren, who is another one of the paper girls. And she's somewhat interested in her, which we know going into the book. I don't think that's a spoiler. Her forbidden romance becomes enmeshed with an explosive plot that threatens her world's entire way of life. And Lei, still the wide-eyed country girl at heart, must decide how far she's willing to go for justice and revenge. The plan for this vlog is that I will do check-ins similar to that one, but maybe a bit more coherent because I'm more awake. Every time I finish a book, get halfway through a book, however I'm feeling. Uh, so minimum of three check-ins, I guess. At the end of the video, we'll, we'll work out what, what I think and do a bit of a summary. So I'd like to dedicate this video to whoever is like streaming their lawn at eight o'clock in the morning. Thank you so much for your time. Hello, it is Monday, the 1st of November. I hope you enjoyed my Halloween reading vlog that went up a month ago. I spent most of the weekend editing uh, a bunch of stuff. I feel like I'm like maybe 40% have my life together right now, uh, which is definitely better because uh, about three weeks ago it was at maybe like 
2% have my life together. Uh, but I, I'm aiming to get to a point where I don't have to spend all of every weekend filming and editing. And uh, so far that is going reasonably well. It mostly just involves having a plan. I don't know, will my planning video be up? I did do a bit of reading. I didn't check in at all. I did finish Girls of Paper and Fire. I really like this book. That's that's probably my first point. Obviously, I talked a little bit about the themes uh, applying and they definitely, definitely do. I just find this a really compelling story, I think. I think it's that I really like Leia as a character. You root for her in this story. And I think if she were a less compelling character, this book would be a little bit more kind of like, okay, like this was good, this was important, but okay. Whereas I find this just really enjoyable to read with all of the caveats that come with like, this is a very difficult story. I still find it like an engaging book. Uh, I was hooked. I really wanted to keep going. It's fast paced. The action is nice. Um, the conspiracy sides of things are very interesting. And yeah, I remembered most of what happened in this, which I was pleased with. I think that must mean I have read this twice. Not that that was what this exercise was for. But yeah, I think if I only had this book, if this was a standalone book, I would be keeping it, which is a good piece of information to have. And then uh, I have actually made a start on Girls of Storm and Shadow. And when I say made a start, I'm over halfway through. Uh, this is where, where I'm up to. A couple of things to note with this one. First off, uh, we are following on from the story with a tiny bit of a time jump, um, which I think is sort of to be expected in YA trilogies, um, especially ones where the first one is in such a tight setting. We often have this little bit of a time skip. Um, the other thing I would mention is that we get more point of view characters in this very, very sparsely. It is mostly still first person from Lay's perspective, but we just get the odd chapter here and there, I think it's roughly every five chapters or so, we just get somebody else's insight, which is very interesting. And I think that's largely so that we can see the other side of the conflict, um, not in terms of like agreeing with it, because like, let's be real, we're not going to do that. But just in terms of a bit of foreshadowing, a bit of dramatic irony, all of that stuff. I do want to touch on the romance, I think. Um, and this is a little bit spoilery if you haven't finished book one. I think that the romance in this series so far has been very, very sweet. There is a little bit of that second book in a YA series tension of like, uh, I just need to protect you. But I think because it's sapphic, it feels different, you know? And I don't know if that's that's just me being like, okay, finally getting to read it this way. That's nice. I'm finding this just as enjoyable as book one. I think it's a little bit less focused. And for that reason, I find it a bit more hard to follow. But that could also be because we've met a lot more characters and you know what my brain is like with names and people and oh, I cannot keep them all in here. I've also noticed, I think I haven't, you know, sat down and done the maths, but I think this has slightly longer chapters. So it's just like a little bit less fast paced than book one felt. But overall, I am enjoying it. Um, I was thinking last night about the YA trilogy. I haven't looked at the plot summary of book three. I haven't remembered what happens at the end of book two, but I was just thinking more generally about um, the kind of, what I often call the problem with YA trilogies, but I don't think I mean problem um, because it, it, sometimes it's to their best interest. But this thing of book one will feature a incredibly small setting. So we'll have, you know, you're in a prison, the prison healer, you're in The Hunger Games, The Hunger Games. Um, what else? I, I'm just looking around me for wired trilogies, but I don't think I have a huge number of them on my shelves. You have this very unique, which is the selling point, you know, one of the selling points, um, small, small setting. You're in the palace, you're in a, a particular contest quite often. So you have this very rigid structure. And often then book two will be going outside of that. We see a slightly more of the world. And I will say that I've said this many times before. I really like that. I like to get more of a world. But I think what happens often or what feels like it's happened often, obviously, I don't, I'm not inside anyone's heads, is that the second book is less well thought out because this first setting was really, really hammered in and, and the world was sort of like, eh, there's probably islands somewhere. Uh, and then when we get to those islands, it feels a little bit like, okay, well, are we just here because they're here? Why, what are we doing? Where's the structure? What, where's this plot going? And we've seen it in a couple of things and I've talked about it heaps on this channel. In this case, I think that we are seeing that a tiny bit in this loss of focus, possibly. That could also be my, my feeling on it. But I think because the conflict isn't resolved at the end of book one, I think that works. I, I think it it's not the most egregious example of this I've ever seen. Uh, I'd be really interested to see what book three is because I think one of my pet peeves, not pet peeve, just a thing that I notice often and it's never like, oh yay, is that book three will be and you're going back to where book one started. Um, like, for example, can I think of a good example that's not going to be terribly spoilery? I don't think I can. So uh, we'll just... 
we'll just keep going. But there is this kind of like, you're in a terrible place. We tried to get you out of the terrible place. You're going back to the terrible place. I'll be interested to see if this series does that just because there's been quite a big gap between book two and three and whether there's been time for that to not happen. I don't, I don't know. I'm excited. I'm going to look up the blurb and future Judith will tell you in probably like two minutes. I think that was everything I kind of like had floating around in my head. I'll talk more when I've finished book two uh, and hopefully got to, got to wiggle on with book three. Um, I, that'll be next week. Um, so you're getting to see a real like progression of time. The clocks have gone back. I'm a mess. I'm excited to see where the next vlog clip takes us. That was a double. You're welcome. Hello! Welcome back again. Today it is the 2nd of November. It's a Tuesday and I finished Girls of Storm and Shadow. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I will start by saying that I had in some ways very similar feelings about both of these books in the sense of I'm having a really good time reading this. It's not as transcendent as some other reading experiences I have had. I think that that's possibly just a, a problem of mindset that I'm having at the moment where if a book isn't like absolutely nailing it a thousand percent, something about me is like, well, then why are we holding on to it if it's not a thousand percent? But you know what? Not every book can best every other book all the time or I would only have one book on my shelves and this would be a very sparse backdrop. Um, so I think, I think possibly I just need to have like slightly gentler... Uh, attitude towards books I'm enjoying. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Second half of this is, I think, more focused than the first half in a lot of ways, and in some ways still kind of continues in that same vein. There's a lot of different people to meet, there's a lot of different conflicts to introduce, and some of them get introduced quite late in the game, so I'll be interested to see if they were just sort of plot devicey things needed to move things along to where they needed to be, or if they'll turn up in book three. I'm very interested to see whether we'll get a different perspective in book three, because and here is where I'm going to put a big old spoilery thing, because I've been pretty spoiler free for Girls of Storm and Shadow and Girls of Paper and Fire. I think in order for this to be like interesting, I will need to talk a little bit about where book two ends. So like here is your spoiler warning. Please do click away. Skip to the end. I will do a spoiler free summary of the three. It's all good. You're all right. Skip. So yeah, that bit where they go to space, right? That was if that annoyed you to find that out, you shouldn't be watching because you got spoilers. Okay, now all the spoiler people are actually gone. Uh, so this book does end where I thought it did. I honestly can't say that's not me being like, aha, I predicted it even though I'd read it before. I had forgotten where this ended. Obviously we have like going back to the king, going back to presumably the palace. And I'll be very interested to see whether we get a second perspective because either we're going to get all of her stuff and no nothing else, like only the palace perspective and anything that happens externally will only find out about it when she finds out about it. But I think... My gut says there's going to be two perspectives. I hope I'm right because I'd really like to see like inside and outside this time because we didn't really get that in book one and two. I just feel like it would make sense but also then you'd have that thing which again is a thing in quite a lot of YA trilogies where suddenly you have two perspectives or more perspectives in Boom. I haven't even vaguely looked at the blurb for book three but I, I just kind of want to dive in not knowing because I, I just want to. But I have to wait because uh, that's on my reading list for next week and I'm trying to be very structured and I need to finish Even Greater Mistakes, Venom and Viper before I can get to that. I think that's all of them. Maybe something else. Oh, Ray Bearer. That's another reread I need to do. But I'll be back for you in just a matter of seconds as I talk about the third book in the series, hopefully in two chunks. I'll see you then. Hello, um, it is Monday, no, Tuesday, the 9th of November. There we go. Um, I'm just gonna do a very quick check-in on Girls of Fate and Fury because I am probably about a hundred or so pages in. I really got my laptop, so I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it's about a hundred pages. And uh, if you don't want to learn anything about this final book in the series, I will put where you can skip to down in the description to learn, uh, just what I thought about the series overall, if I'm planning on keeping it, but I'm not going to get into spoiler spoilers, but I'm going to get into some information about the book, I guess. Are they gone? I believe they are gone. I was correct, we do have multiple perspectives, we have Ren and Lei. Um, I That was 100% what I thought was going to happen, and I'm very pleased that it is, because it does make a big difference. Um, and I was pondering whether I would have liked it if the whole series had been that, if I'd had book one from Ren's perspective. Obviously, that would ruin quite a lot of aspects of the book. You would know very much what is happening from the beginning, but also, don't you already know what's happening from the beginning? You know. My my verdict was actually no, I wouldn't have wanted that for multiple reasons. And I think that um, it doesn't bother me that it's coming right at the end because this is the point where it makes most sense. And I'm very much of the feeling that you should have the perspectives you need to tell the story well. And in this case, I do think it's telling the story well. A hundred pages of mostly kind of sapphic yearning on Ren's part uh, and mostly... 
very difficult stuff happening for Lei, but overall it feeling very triumphant. And I don't know if that means we're going to have like a breakdown moment at any point. Um, obviously, this is a very terrible thing that has happened to her. And one another thing I'm really enjoying is that the book pulls no punches with that. The characters within the book accept that this is the worst thing um, that could possibly have happened. I was very impressed. I feel like the first two books do deal with the topic head on, but they dance around it a little bit more than this book has done. Whereas this book has called out some things that I can't say on YouTube because I will get demonetized. But some stuff has happened in this series and it's really in this point that they're saying this is what that stuff was. And I think that that's really... In some ways, I think the passage of time between the books is in, in the real world, in our world. The passage of time between those books, stuff has become more acceptable to talk about in fiction. And I think that's really interesting. But I've got to finish that book and I need to get to work right now. So I shall speak to you when I finished it, hopefully later today or early tomorrow. It is Wednesday the 10th of November and I finished Girls of Fate and Fury yesterday. And I slept on it because I was like... We don't want to make mistakes of last time. We're going to talk about it after we've had time to process it and think about it. But uh, even though I was horrifically devoid of sleep last night, my insomnia was here. It packed so many punches. Nevertheless, I did not think about it that much. But I can concoct some thoughts here and now. What I will say is that overall, I really enjoyed this book. thought it was fantastic in a lot of ways. Um, I really liked how it resolved. Uh, and I really enjoyed not going to talk about the ending here but I really enjoyed that there were sort of multiple different ways that she could have ended it and she set up a lot of those different ways and then ultimately used one of them and I think that that was a really interesting take because another problem with YA trilogies is that often they can feel a bit formulaic and in this case I don't think it did feel formulaic um, I thought it was very enjoyable I would say overall it feels like a very satisfying read and it feels like it's handled with a lot of care and consideration for survivors and I think that speaks to the author's experiences Natasha Nian also mentions in the author's note talking about the disability representation in this book and makes the comment of I can't speak to the experiences of the particular characters in my book but the author does have EDS so talks about her experiences with that and I thought that was an interesting angle that I hadn't known I hadn't you know there was no reason I should have that information um but I thought it was a nice touch to bring in that representation as well this book felt very diverse in a lot of ways in a lot of the different uh, identities represented but it never felt box ticky which I think is fantastic and a testament to the work that's put into it it's really interesting there was a lot of faff around the publication of this book particularly in the US I think because James Patterson books was doing some doing some stuff. So it's really nice to finally have it and to, to finally finish the story. I wouldn't say it ended in a way that was like completely shocking to me, but it was still very enjoyable. My overall feelings on the series as a whole is that this is a really fantastic set of books that has young adult focus, I would say. It's like very much in the young adult tropes, but you can read it as an adult and enjoy it. And it tackles some really difficult topics in a fantasy world without turning those topics into a fantasy. So yes, it's a demon king who's doing this, but let's talk about what the reality of trauma is, you know? And I think that's a really, really good thing. I'm not going to be recommending these books in the same way as I would recommend, I don't know. Can I think of a good example of books that are fun? No. Uh, because obviously there are people for whom the series is going to be a bit difficult to read. For some people it's just going to be a no, I can't, I can't read that series. But for me, I think it manages to combine adventure and the exploration of all of that. It doesn't get subsumed by that. And it's, it's a love story in the end, which is very powerful. Ultimate decision. Am I going to buy myself a hardback copy of The Girls of Fate and Fury so it matches my hardback copies of the other two books in the series? <laughs> Hi Luna, are you going to give me some advice? Luna says, uh, no, you should not buy it because you should spend all of that money on sausages for me. I'm trying to decide at the moment if my aversion to buying it is an aversion to buying books full stop. And if I found it in a shop for like half the price, I would probably pick it up. Um, <laughs> I've spent quite a lot of money on books this month. I have a, a set of secondhand books coming today that are for series I'm doing next year. I've recently picked up this lovely copy of Laura Olympus. Oh, it's very shiny. But ultimately, my decision on whether I keep a book or books in this case, or unhaul them, is do I want to reread it? And do I want to reread this series? I think I will. I think I will want to reread this series at some point. Um, I think at the moment, my reason for saying no is that I have too many other books to reread. But you know what? There's a lot of time in life. I might want to reread them. And if I don't want to reread them, I will pass them on. But I will order a copy in the fullness of time. It also might go on a Christmas list because I feel like this would be a nice book to receive 
for Christmas and a nice talking point for Christmas. I don't know. But simply, conclusion to the video, I would like to own this series in full so I can reread it. Decision made. Have you read the series? What do you think? Uh, have you read the first two and not the third one? Are you planning on reading the third one? What is your relationship to these books? Uh, I'd be very interested to know. I think for me particularly because they were a series where I started them when I was very very keen on YA and I've finished them when I'm less in that zone uh, so my feelings on them are quite different and I, I think it's, I'd be very interested to know where you stand on them. Let me know if there are any other series you would like reading vlogs on, particularly things that are finishing in the next year or so. Jade City is coming up, uh, that will be coming in the future. While you're down there commenting, if you haven't already and you've made it this far, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also follow me on social media, come hang out on Discord, we have a wonderful time talking about books. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. Uh, where am I going with this? Uh, first off, uh, excuse me, listen from Ren, the Ren's perspective. Uh, what do I want to say? I love you, please don't be petty. Oh, that was much longer than I anticipated.